Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to do an unboxing, a pairing, a setup for automations and templates associated with a FP1 Akara human presence sensor. Uh, I'm going to give you my review on it. So what is an FP1 presence sensor? What it is not is an Akara motion sensor. Uh, very different technologies. One uses PIR, one uses uh, millimeter microwave um, radiation to be able to sense presence. Same output, as in it does a, a detection of presence or motion in a room, but very different technologies. So millimeter uh, radar. So it is not the equivalent of a air traffic controller with, with uh, the high power radiation that those things send out uh, and the, the range and sensitivity of those. But what it does do is the same functionality. So there's an, a wave that is sent out and it bounces off a, um, an article in its direct line of sight and then it receives back the uh, reflected waves. And it, based on the distance and time and the direction, it can estimate how far or how how far something is away or if it's actually moving towards it using Doppler or if it can use, say if it's moving away from it using Doppler again. So very techno very powerful technology um, and something that we can utilize inside of Home Assistant as well. So what it doesn't do though, if you're thinking, oh my goodness, this thing's the same as a radar, it's got microwaves, it's got the microwave in the, uh, the title for it. So my microwave goes and heats up my food. This does not go and cook your brains. So it's very low power. There's only got one amp that goes into this um, this sensor itself. Um, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, it'll just send out a wave and it will measure the distance and the time that it actually takes to come back and what that reflective wave is. And then it will do some calculations on it to be able to provide you information. We're going to, as I said before, we're going to do an unboxing. We're going to do a pairing associated with this device inside of Home Assistant. We'll look at some automations and templates and then we'll get a roundup at the end of it to uh, walk through what should you buy this or should you avoid this. Now, since this one came out um, last year, there has been an FP2 that has actually come out now as well. So they listened to the community and they acted upon this one. So um, the first one is still for sale, the FP1. It's a Zigbee based um, uh, sensor. It only does areas inside of a room, a single area inside of a room. So it will see if something is moving in that room and it will see if it's moving away from or left hand uh, towards, or it will see if it's moving from the left to the right inside of the room. It's approximately about $100 per unit. Uh, the unit I bought was from AliExpress and was probably around about $75. But if you can buy it in the country now for about $100 in Australia, your mileage might vary in relation to your own locations and countries. The FP2, on the other hand, is different in that it has a Wi-Fi, not Zigbee, so it is quicker to respond than Zigbee would be, but it uses more power. But since it's a powered device anyway, that's not really a problem for it, but it will add to your Wi-Fi network. Uh, currently, I'm running around about 75 different devices on my network, and you cannot run those types of devices on just a standard ISP uh, router that you'll be uh, provided with. Um, once you get above around about 10, 15 devices on a, a, one of those supplied ones, that can be a problem. So just take that into account. This is a multi-area room on the FP2, which means that it can actually detect different parts of the room. So you can say by the door, and if there's movement by the door, then actually detect that, and it can actually feed back that information into Home Assistant. The FP2 can also do five-person detection, so you can track multiple different um, people inside of a room, but for all that extra technology, you're going to pay for it. It's around about $200 per unit in Australia local. Do you need it? Debatable. There are pros and cons associated with either device. We're going to run through the FP1 today, but the FP2, it could be an option for you. So let's get into it.
So now I come to the fun bit, which is the pairing component. So as you can see, I'm running on 2023.7.2, and the date is the 19th of July today. Um, we're moving across into settings, integrations. We're going to press the add integration button. We're going to select a add a Zigbee device. We're going to press the center button on the actual FP1 for 10 seconds. Add device has been found. We're going to rename it for the convenience just to FP1. And we're going to put it into a location lounge. Moving back into the integrations, let's go and pick up on our FP1. We can see that the firmware is running on firmware 36. Now, I'll put some links in the uh, comments below that there is a new firmware out of firmware 54. Now that firmware seems to provide some additional functionality, but um, as of the making of this video in Australia, we cannot seem to get 54. It's running on 36 and Zigbee to MQTT still reports 36 as the latest version of the supported firmware. Uh, your mileage might vary, but have a look through the GitHub reviews. But for the purposes of this, we're going to run on 36. Now the entities that are, can be seen are the occupancy, which is shown as clear. We can see an approach distance, which has the values of far, medium, and near. We have a direction mode, which is uh, set from unidirectional, which means any movement inside of its 120 degree field of view, or alternatively, if it's moved from left to right. And we have a motion sensitivity, which is usually set to high, medium, low, usual ones. Um, I've set them on high for the purposes of this demonstration, but they'll need to be fine-tuned by yourself. There is also a present status reset. This one will clear whatever the status is set on the occupancy back to clear. Um, because sometimes, as we'll go into it later on, this can get stuck, uh, it's, uh, detected, and doesn't want to move off. There is a device temperature gauge associated with this. I found this not to be very accurate and doesn't vary very much. It's within two to three degrees and can be offset if you need to. It's listed as diagnostic. There is an identifier button, which when pressed a little LED on the back next to the pairing button of the device will light up. So for the purposes of this demonstration, what I've done is uh, clear down the occupancy. I've set it to near distance, unidirectional and low sensitivity. I'll just move something in front of the actual sensor itself. It takes about six seconds for it to detect that there's been a movement associated with it. Movement has been detected three seconds ago, and now we wait. And hence the problem with the device. We're now three minutes in. It's been facing away um, from anything that's moving, detect, and there is still no, it's still set to occupancy detected. Um, I have seen it when it switches back to clear again, but in the majority of cases, um, it does not. There are things on the Home Assistant website that talk to the fact that this is, relies on the specific power brick that it comes with. That didn't make any difference for me. Um, there are other ones that say it needs a quality power brick to be able to work properly. Um, I put it on several different power bricks and still nothing. Uh, it still says detected and sticks on detected. And I've heard other ones, um, other comments on the Home Assistant website, which I will put in the links below that talk to the fact that when you fetch the device out of its surround and use it in raw state then it works and then as soon as it goes back into its surround then it fails to stop um, fails to work properly again um, something to do with the reflection associated with the microwaves on the inside of the actual plastic housing that it comes in um, so I'm not going to progress through to the automations because at this point in time, there is no point. Um, the only automation I can suggest that we could, should do or could do in relation to this would be the fact of clearing this back to um, a clear by using the present sensor and then pairing this in conjunction with a Akara motion sensor to do consistency in relation to somebody's in the room, but using this for the microwave components to say when somebody, um, a very small movement is actually made. So what do I think the Akara FP1 present sensor? Uh, let's go through pros and cons. Pros. First to market for a millimeter wave presence sensor at an affordable price. Uh, it's open Zigbee protocol, which is good because it doesn't mean it has to link into the Akara hub. It can link in through to Home Assistant through any of the Zigbee adapters. Small form factor. 
Um, it's relatively small, probably about five mil five centimeters by around about four centimeters. Cons, uh, it's not battery because it needs to be powered all the time. Um, some of the functionality is not available within Home Assistant and it's limited to the Acara hub, which can be quite limiting. Um, firmwares, so there, as I said before, there are reports of uh, the firmware 54 is out there in the wild. Um, but if you look at Zigbee to MQTT and look at the ZHA, it reports 36 and doesn't want to upgrade to anything else except for 36. And the most important one, it just doesn't work. It's detects things, uh, it says there's occupancy and presence in the room, and it never resets. Tried it with all the different um, power bricks, tried it with different sensitivities, all the combinations of all the sensitivity range, uh, unidirect, left, right, etc. center, still doesn't work. So should you buy it? No. Um, save your money. Um, either go and buy the FP2, which we've untested, but we'll get one in. Maybe we'll have better luck with that. I have seen better reports on that one. It is a Wi-Fi, so it should, in theory, have better range, better uh, connectivity. Um, but all those things are associated with Wi-Fi as well, which means that you might have to upgrade your router to be able to accommodate more Wi-Fi things onto your network. Um, personally, um, I would go and to buy from Lewis on Inc. Smart Home. He does an EP1 home built one. Um, same price, virtually, more functionality. I'll put links in the descriptions below. Um, but check out his channel and check out his uh, millimeter wave uh, sensor, and maybe that's the one for you. Thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all those usual things, and see you on the next one.